Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen Allen. Yes, we are back with another Batman 66 episode review, and today we'll be reviewing the episode The Impractical Joker, with Joker's big return to season 2 after spending the majority of the first bit of the season pretty much absent, since the last time we saw the Joker was in the movie, along with the rest of our anchor villains. So before we get into now before we get more into the Joker's role, let's get into the actual plot. We begin our episode with the Joker once again pretty much on the loose, but he's going to random places with the key, with the word key theme in it and essentially destroying very useless mindless stuff. The police have been called in due to these random things and naturally assume that it's the Joker. My problem here is that it's it's a bit of a stretch that the Joker p could possibly be involved and as usual they can't do it themselves. So what do they do? They call in Batman and Robin to help sort this to help sort this out. We then use the opening credits and they arrive at the at police headquarters. When they get there, they go through all these keys. It's going to play up a big theme for the, only this episode, thank God. And here they find that but some clue that it's that is going to lead them to this uh, Scottish person who houses this key collection, including uh, and uh, especially this um famous key which is a giant gold very replica very priceless key that will make a perfect prize for the joker joker is then revealed to his henchman that he's created this box which will become a huge plot point in this episode batman and robin go to the scottish person's uh i guess royal pa um i guess you could say uh palace or not palace really but i guess apartment uh suite and as they're there, they have a look at all these fantastical keys, and then when they go on the back, they find this very rare golden key, and the Joker pops up and plans to steal it. And with this box that he has made, which we saw in a few moments ago, when he opens it, it it freezes Robin in an instance of time, which he uses the opportunity to steal the key and leave. This makes the Scottish person very angry, and he's and he's going to sue Batman and Robin for the loss of his key, uh, key and essentially Gotham City. Now Batman and Robin agree it was their fault, but they know that this is Joker, and they know they have to stop him before he does something even worse. We then cut back to Wayne uh, at Wayne Manor. Where they are watching the news, and, just, and Batman says, "Okay, it's time to watch the Green Hornet show." A nice little foreshadowing to the eventual crossover, but I like how the, it acknowledges that it's a TV show in their world, just as ironically in the Green Hornet series, Batman is a show in their world. But just as that's happening, a classic staple of the Joker happens. He's hijacked the news airways, and has left Batman and Robin a, a clue to essentially to essentially figure out his next caper. With realizing that, they then use the opportunity to go into the Batcave and figure out where Joker plans to steal, uh, to basically his next caper. Realizing, um, and with the incredible Bat logic, which is too bizarre even for me, they realize that he must be to this fur salon where he plans to steal all these furs. Batman and Robin arrive and catch Joker, his uh, female accomplice, and. Uh, you know, attempted to steal the furs. Joker then uses his special box to try and freeze Batman and Robin, but it doesn't work because Batman and Robin have this bat device which prevents them from being hypnotized. Joker then calls all his thugs and a bat fight breaks out. However, during the fight, the box is destroyed, but the Joker and his female accomplice make their escape. Realizing that he's on the lamb, they try to find his possible hideout, so they go through the phone book and use their bat logic to find his hiding place. They then go to the place owned by Clavier Ankh, believing that that's his location. They run into the female assistant, where female assistant, and leads them essentially into a trap, a trap where they are captured. What ha what ends up happening is. Joker puts Batman into this giant key making machine, essentially to turn Batman into a giant key, and Robin is put into this, well, room which essentially plans to turn him into a wax dummy. And that's where we end our episode. If I could say anything, I think no one's really changed in much character wise for this episode. I mean, is how, I mean, Gordon and Chief Ahara's logic on how the Joker could be responsible for this does feel a bit of a stretch. 
the little scenes that Alfred and Aunt Harriet have are all fun and bring a little joy to it. Um, Bruce, now uh, Batman, Robin, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, Batman, Robin, Bruce Wayne digressing. They're all fine. Like I said, nothing's really changed with the main characters, really. But that's fine because they're fine the way they are. But let's be, but let's get to the real reason why this episode is great. It is. Caesar Romero returning in the role of the Joker. And speaking of the Joker. And here we have Caesar Romero back as the Joker. It's been a very long time since we had him. And it's great that he's come back. Now, like I said in season one, Caesar Romero was fully becoming more like this show's Joker. But here in season two, he's fully back again. And what I love about it. As I think he, like his costume wise looks a bit more natural. Don't get me wrong, I would have preferred the suit to be more purple than pink. I, I no longer have any problems with his hair now. And I just like how Cesar Romero is fully back. And this energy that he's known to bring with the character is fully back. He's fully out there. And I'm absolutely sure that he would have had a blast playing this role. Uh, but if I could, and there's really no real gripes I could have with his performance, nor his motivation. Again, for me, Joker seems to be the person that did whatever he wanted, purely for the fun of it. And even there's no real motivation-wise, I have no problems with that. But if I could point out one thing I guess a real problem is, is maybe him using that box to freeze people you know, to freeze people or paralyze them in time. I don't know, but that just seems something that a, the Clock King would use, not the Joker. Other than that, Caesar Romero is just great as always. A window cameo this time is an actor named Howard Duff, who played the character Sergeant Sam Stone on the on a, a t on a cop procedural TV show at the time that was pretty popular. And so naturally, he got to appear out the window. I like how, that's like with the Green Hornet, they're sort of promoting other, like, cop TV shows. And, yeah, and just like, I guess, with the previous window cameo, I had to kind of research who it is, because not even I was that fully aware. Interesting fact, though, this would not be the last time we'd see Howard Duff. He would actually would appear in Season 3 as a uh, villain in the second last episode of the season. So who knows, we might get to know a bit more about him when we get there. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about this window cameo. It's nothing really grand or spectacular, and nothing against the actor. But then again, what I like about these window cameos, it gives us an insight into how, you know, who the big star stars were of the time, and I kind of like it for those reasons. The Impractical Joker is an okay episode for Joker's return. It was nothing like grand or spectacular when compared to Catwoman or even the Penguin's return. But I kind of found this episode to be rather mixed. Again, Joker doing whatever he wants does fit his profile. Again, Joker always did things randomly. And it and essentially his crimes were in many ways just one big joke. And never really had anything to do so well with the story. If I could have... And again, my gripe with maybe the Joker using that device to freeze people in time. Seeing something more of a Clock King device. And hell, in the second part... There'll be another thing he'll use, which I think was a missed opportunity that Clock King, Clock, the Clock King, never got to use. But the fact that I'm happy, but despite that, I'm happy to still see Caesar Romero back. I will admit this episode is a bit clunky, heavily, like it was, like, fastly written and not fully thought out on what they wanted to do. I can't, and I'm not sure whether that was a huge fault of the writers just going in through the motions, or the or. William Dozer being too focused on the Green Hornet never got around to uh, to being too focused on the Green Hornet and not so much paying much of attention to this. I don't know, I don't know, but this just feels very wonky. And there we have it, that's the Impractical Joker. Join us next time when we review the part two to this. So until then, the next tune next time for the same Steven Hour and the same Steven channel. So long for now.